Hey guys, just going to do uh, another video. This time uh, something a little bit different, at least for me. Um, seen a lot of people doing like top 10 countdown videos. Thought that sounded kind of fun. Thought I'd uh, try one of my own. So this will be a top 10 countdown of my favorite Giallo uh, films. Obviously based on ones I own in my collection. There are hundreds of Giallo films and Clearly I don't have them all, but based on ones I've actually seen and ones that I've owned, that I do own, excuse me, here's a countdown. I have a couple of special mentions first that didn't quite make my list. So first off, we have a film called The Sister of Ursula, which is a 1978 giallo film by Enzo Milioni. Um, basically standard fare kind of giallo, it's nothing terribly fresh or anything, but the killer's choice of a weapon in this is, I don't want to really say because it'll ruin, uh, kind of ruin the film, but it's very unique, and it's, it's worth checking out if you can find it at a good price. Real sleazy film as well. And my other sort of honorable mention is uh, Andrea Bianchi's uh, Strip Nude for Your Killer. Um, Bianchi's actually better known for a zombie, cheesy zombie horror film called Burial Ground. So if anybody's seen that, you know what to kind of expect. But this has some really good music. It's pretty entertaining. It's really sleazy again as well. Pretty predictable, but it's it's cool and it looks good on the Blu-ray. It's the only Blu-ray film I'll be showing in this set. Now to actually officially get to my top ten. At number ten is Umberto Lenzi's Seven Bloodstained Orchids. Um, Basically the reason this is here, it's not the most bloody, it's not the most sleazy, but it's actually, it does have a, a very good story based on a novel by Edgar Wallace, who did a lot of novels that ended up turning into giallo films. Um, but anyway, a very good story, well worth picking up if you can find it, I think it's out of print. Uh, number nine, one that's a little more obscure, is The House with Laughing Windows by Pupi Avati, a 1976 giallo film. Uh, basically this one has a rural, a rural setting which makes it a lot more unique. Uh, basically about a guy who restores paintings and he's restoring a painting in an old chapel in this creepy little town and Needless to say, things start to get very strange. I thought it a very original story, very good film. Uh, I would definitely recommend people checking that out. So that was The House with Laughing Windows. Uh, number eight is another uh, the classic by Sergio Martino. You'll see several of his films in this list. And this is his debut film, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Basically, it's kind of about uh, Mrs. Ward, who's sort of married, but it, it, there's an ex-boyfriend and a new love interest get involved, and it becomes a real convoluted, crazy thing. It's a very, very good story. It's from 1970. Well worth checking out. It also has uh, George Hilton, Isaac, uh, Isaac Razumov, several legends of the giallo genre, so... Anyway, guys, that's my number eight. At number seven, we're sticking with Sergio Martino. And this is Your Vice is a Locked Room, and Only I Have the Key. Also features Edvige Vinash, who's absolutely stunning. Uh, this is uh, from 1972, and it also features uh, Luigi Castilli, uh, Nita Strindberg, and Ivan Razumov again. All people that have been featured in many Giallo films. This one starts out in a very traditional sort of Giallo film. 
in the second half of the film, it, it goes into sort of a retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat. And I liked how they, they combined the two sort of genres together, and it, I thought it worked well in the film. So there's that one. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. At number six, again, is Sergio Martino film. This is All the Colors of the Dark. Uh, again, starts uh, stars George Hilton and Edvij Finash and uh, Ivan Razumov. Uh, it also has uh, Nives Navarro, who went by Susan Scott oftentimes, but she uses a real name here. Um, but this is a very psychedelic film. It's about a woman who's... Uh, It's been a while since I watched this, guys, but I think she lost a child during a pregnancy or something, and she's, uh, Edwidge Finesse's character, and so she's, uh, you know, on these, all these different drugs. Needless to say, she ends up getting mixed up with some kind of a satanic cult, and there's some orgy scenes going on, and there's an absolutely brilliant stalking sequence with Ivan Razumov's character in this that was pretty tense stuff, so, um, but anyway, I really love this one, so, again, all these are highly recommended. Uh, the next one, probably Sergio Martino's most well-known film, and that is Torso, it was known under a number of other titles, Carnal Violence or something, it's another title, um, but this one stars Susie Kendall and uh, Tina Omont, who is known best for uh, the Tinto Brass film Salon Kitty. But basically this features uh, a bunch of girls that go off uh, to this sort of villa, and they're stalked by this creepy masked serial killer type character. In fact, there's one sequence where he's actually dismembering bodies in the film, and Susie Kendall's character is in the house with him, but he doesn't know she's there, and she's kind of spying on him from a different room. It's, it's a pretty creepy sequence, but very great film. Classic Sergio Martino. This one comes from 1973. Highly, highly recommended. Let's see where are we at. We're up to number four, and that is Dario Argento's debut film, and I have both the VCI Blu-ray and the Blue Underground uh, double uh, disc uh, DVD, and that is The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Uh, basically, Almost every Giallo film that followed this film sort of took on a lot of the elements with the black gloves and the razor blade killer and so on. It's got a, it's got a really great score, really great story. Uh, this one stars Susie Kendall uh, from Torso, the prior film, and Tony Luzante. Um, Basically, anybody into Giallo films has already seen this, so I won't dwell on it too too much. But anyway, that's my, I guess, number four film on my list. That brings us to my number three film, which is part of a double pack, and it is Tenebrae, which is one of the few 80s uh, Giallos I'm a big fan of. It's also Argento. Uh, one of his most violent, uh, some really great uh, cinematography, really wonderful musical score by uh, Goblin, Prague rock group from Italy, well worth checking out. And then of course, my number two is Deep Red, which won't surprise anybody. Again, a great score by Goblin, uh, some really great effects and so on. Well worth checking out both of these Argento classics. And that leads me to my number one, which is a bit of a probably be a bit of a surprise to a lot of people, and that is 
What Have You Done to Solange by Massimo Delamano. Um, absolutely loved this film, knew very little about it, ended up winning a, uh, an eBay auction and getting a copy of it. But basically it has to do with uh, kind of a different theme. It has to do with uh, some really strong child abuse stuff. It's also based on an, uh, a novel by Edgar Wallace. But it's really uh, creepy. It's really kind of a much darker type giallo film with a more serious sort of intent than some of the others. Um, of course, a, a great soundtrack by the master Ennio Morricone. And it actually has a, a small role by Camille Keaton, who actually plays Solange in this film, who was Jennifer Hill in the original uh, I Spit on Your Grave and also played in Toe Tag's uh, film Cella Tursica. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I have for you. Just thought I'd knock out another little video quick, so thanks an awful lot for checking it out, guys, and I'll talk to you later.